Drake may be the wild card that overturns the XXX Temptation Y'all's murder convictions. And I'll be real, it sounded pretty far-fetched, but the more you dive into this case and you hear out the arguments, it becomes even more convincing. Diedrich Devon Williams, who's behind bars for life for murdering rapper XXX Tentacion, is now appealing his case, his conviction, his sentence on the grounds that he did not receive a fair trial. And this is in part due to what his attorneys say is the exclusion of evidence that pointed the finger or maybe pointed the finger at other people. And one of those people whose name has come up is rapper Drake. The judge refused to allow the defense to bring Drake to court, especially after Drake hired Bradford Corwin, because everybody thought this was cloud chasing. The judge especially thought the defense is only doing this to increase his own profile by, I guess, cross-examining Drake. But here's the thing, though. The defense is saying, no, Drake is the most suspicious person in the death of XSX Temptation, on. It don't get much more suspicious. The beef between Drake and XXX and Tassian will go down in history. In 2017, X started getting his blood with his song, Look At Me. And this caught Drake's attention and he decided to drop his newest single, KMT. Love is just not in my plans. Not even taking the this pissed off X, cause X song was still bubbling in the underground and it ain't really making the mainstream yet. So for Drake to do this before his song really got the shine it deserved, X thought was the scummiest move ever. Drake was like, what? Steal your song? I don't even know this kid. X was like, bruh, yes, you do know me. And in X's first interview from jail, X will say that Drake reached out to a DJ who knew him and Drake was actually planning to call his manager so they could lock in. But then Drake all of a sudden went ghost. Bro, I hit up a DJ that I with. Who I did? Drake. Okay. Drake hit up a DJ that I fought with. You feel me? And, and bro told me, um, he was like, yo, Drake, watch your interview. He said he with you, and he f with your partner, Ski Mask. He's like, yo, he saying he go call your manager within the next few days. Okay. So, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm amped up. Initially, he was supposed to contact one of my managers. So, he doesn't do it. That same week, bro, I go on to, bro, well, I can't go on to it, obviously, because I'm locked up. But yeah. I, I'm on the securest phone, you feel me? So, you in jail, he's supposed to contact your manager, yeah. and then... What he, happened? He, I mean, he, he dropped a fucking video of previewing that shit in Amsterdam. So Drake never calls X. He goes ghost. Then he drops a song that's identical to XXX's first hit song. And obviously, X felt like this was not a coincidence, that Drake was probably going to tap in and decided not to tap in because he already had plans on stealing XXX's song and dropping it. So XXX, when he got out of jail, bro, he went on a rampage, bro. All right, he was dissing Drake's mama. Hey. Tell Drake mom, I want some. <laughs> hey, tell, tell Drake mom, I want some tapioca pudding. <laughs> tell Drake mom, I like my, my pudding tapioca. <laughs> and I like my kneecaps like sandbags. <laughs> Yo. Hey, y'all like pudding? I like pudding, bitch. I like my, I like my hoes when they, when they, when they like pudding. <laughs> I like my hoes with pudding, man. I like my hoes with pudding. Are you cutting? <laughs> hey, yo, I'm not gonna lie. I love y'all. Hey, this is so fun. I just like, bro, it's like, it's so fun to talk and know I'm not gonna do shit. <laughs> if, like, bro, I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I don't know what took place behind the scenes or what XSX heard. But XSX went from Drake ain't gonna do nothing to me so I can talk my ish to changing up his tone a little bit. XX Tentation posted, if anyone tries to kill me, it was Champagne Poppy. I'm snitching right now. X tone could have switched up for a slew of reasons. It could have been XSX is being told behind the scenes. Drake got a lot of resources, bro. You don't want war with that man. Leave it alone. Or it could have been Drake aligning himself with goons from Chicago like 600 Breezy who Drake wasn't signing. Drake had no musical relationship with this person. Drake just had this goon and savage around him just because he liked to hang out with him or maybe because he was the muscle. And it wouldn't be a coincidence that after 600 Breezes started hanging out with Drake, he pulled up in Broward County, XSX Tentacion's hood, looking for X. Knock it off. Knock it off. I'm in my hotel in Broward County. Fuck 
knock it out. Peacock. Hey, yo, I'm just look, I'm looking for Triple X and Passion. Y'all seen him, nigga? No? Nobody seen him? Mr. Peacocks? Ain't this his hood? Where he at? No? Nobody seen him? No? Yo! Hey, Peacock Fule! Hey, hey, have you, have you seen the Look at this big ass peacock. This is a big ass peacock, bro. This a big ass peacock. I'm in Miami, though. And we're all over in every county. If a nigga looking for me, and you talking that gangster shit, and I'm blicked up. 600 Breezy said he was blicked up, meaning he had a gun on him looking for ex sex and on behalf of Drake. But Harris was really interesting. Not one, but two of Drake's shooters was in Florida when Exorcist Ex and Tishion was shot and killed. Top five and 600 Breezy. Developing right now a search for a killer in South Florida after an up and coming rapper is shot dead. 20 year old XXX Temptation killed in an apparent robbery. Police say the artist, whose real name is Jose Onfroy, was leaving a Broward County motorcycle shop yesterday when he was shot by two men who ran up to his car. He was rushed to a hospital but did not make it. Onfroy's death comes just weeks after he earned his first number one album, which debuted March 31st. And Drake ain't waste no time claiming his body, bruh. X body wasn't even cold yet. And Drake was in the studio making diss tracks towards X. On the record daylight, Drake's literally chants on the chorus, shot him in daylight, shot him in daylight, shot him, he shot him, what? Shot him, what? Shot him in daylight, shot him in daylight, shot him in daylight, broad day. All right, now he continues though and he raps, I wasn't there when they caught the body. TBS think that I bought the body. Internet swear that I bought the body. Take more than that to go pop somebody. Them ninjas talk about everybody, so I'm low-key happy they got somebody. On Daylight, he's speaking on both sides of his mouth. On one hand, he's saying, shot him in broad day, we shot him in daylight, we did it. And then on the other hand, he's saying, listen, the internet think I bought that body, bro, but it would take more than that to go pop somebody. All right, like it would take more than him just dissing me or dissing my mom for me to really want to go kill this dude, right? But I'm glad they did it though. So, uh, yo, Drake was a menace. Yo, Drake is still a menace, right? But you have to appreciate though the consistency. If Drake would have came out screaming or oh, rest in peace, XSX, bro, he would have been a like, right? Like he would have been a clown for that, right? Because y'all have beef. He ain't like you. You ain't like him. Don't fake it for the funk now. But that wasn't the only song, bro. Drake continues. On a song called On BS, Drake, like, this is probably probably the most direct or second most direct shot at XSX. Obviously, X means 10 in Roman numerals. So when Drake raps, damn, maybe I should do a 20. Maybe I should break that 20, do a 10. Maybe I should break that 10, do a 5. Then if it gets live, do a 5 again. 5 and 5 again is a 10. Break the 20, 10. All right, now here's where Drake's get really bold, all right? So after essentially name dropping X, he raps. Then if it gets live, do a five again. If he held his tongue on that live, he'd be alive again. Damn. Speaking on XSX and Tasha Young, comment on Instagram live and dissing Drake and his mama. And Drake is saying, listen, if he would have held his tongue, bruh, he would have been alive. Obviously, shots at XSX. This could be Drake doing the rapper thing, where he has nothing to do with the body. But since him and the person who died were beefing, he's going to go out of his way to claim the body since there's no downside, right? If I didn't do it, they can't prosecute me for it, right? Because I didn't do it. But the fans thinking I did it is only going to increase my street credibility. But he didn't stop here. He continued and diss X on more songs. XSX and Tessian's killers, they stole a Louis bag filled with $50,000 in cash. That's what they killed him for. So when Drake raps Louis bags in exchange for body bags, yeah, it was a diss and X. A straight diss, nothing more. Drake would also rap SMS triple X. That's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. Why you keep on shooting if you know that nigga did? That's the only kind of ish that gets you some respect. 
Like, come on, bro. Yo, at this point, bro, if Drake ain't kill XXX, bro, he wants the world to think he did it. Come on, yo, it don't get more blatant than this. Now, because of Drake's antics, obviously, as you can see, those are some pretty severe antics. Because of his antics, the defense attorneys are now filing an appeal of the conviction because they believe the judge unfairly stopped any type of Drake evidence from being mentioned or stopped Drake from being sanctioned to come to court. The defense attorney believe, yo, there was more than probable cause for them to put Drake on their witness list. And the fact that the judge stopped that from happening for essentially no reason at all, well, his client was given an unfair trial. Now, the lawyers who are following the appeal is different from the trial attorney, but the trial attorney actually came on law and crime to break down exactly why, exactly why, what the judge did was unfair and why, you know, um, his ex-client needs a new trial, particularly revolving around this Drake angle. There is so many errors that it's, you know, it's, it takes a while to even break it down. Um, one of the one of the main errors, in, in my opinion, in the case, which I had to sit through, argue and live it, was the fact that in December of 2020, I filed a witness list. The state's reaction to that was to file a motion saying we want the court to strike all of his witnesses which is that's not even uh something that's legal or that you could do you have to itemize who you want stricken you just can't shotgun approach and say i want all of his uh defense witnesses uh st stricken but the state attorney did that in a hearing that i had to defend you know myself to that in that motion the court didn't grant that but the court instructed me to file a pleading which was the nexus in my my defense witnesses and what nexus they had to my theory of defense which i argued was inappropriate because at the end of the day you're just you're you're ordering me to give the state a blueprint of what my of what my defense is going to be but i was ordered to do it and i did it when prior to prior to um uh mr onfroy which i'll refer to him as x for for this um for this uh, interview, because his stage name was Tentacion, which was the victim in this case, uh, prior to him being murdered, he had posted on Instagram, "If anybody, ki if anybody kills me, I'm snitching right now. It's champagne poppy." I'm paraphrasing, but something to that effect, right? The attorney would also mention a conversation that XSX had with DJ Academics. He would claim this conversation that X and Academics had off air or offline is very important. If you pair that up in context with X posting on social media that if I die, Drake did it, well, we have to turn over every stone. And we are asking the court to allow us to turn over every stone. If that means getting a statement from academics, if that means going to Drake's home and summoning him to come to court, we have to be allowed to present a real defense for my client. He had feuds, ongoing public feuds with not only Drake, but a lot of rappers that are either signed to OVO or related to Drake in some way, including 600 Breezy, which is a Chicago based rapper and a, ra a rapper that's from Toronto by the name of, um, he goes by top five, which is Hassan Ali. Um, and I had to lay that all, all out in, in detail. The court was fully aware of my theory of defense Prior to that, I filed a motion to perpetuate the testimony of um, Livingston Allen, which goes by the name of DJ Academics, because DJ Academics was friends with X and had posted long YouTube, uh, you know, uh, content regarding this beef. He actually posted YouTube, say, uh, a, a YouTube saying that he was on the phone with X discussing the issue and the beef that he had with Drake, and specifically. X had put, had either said or posted something about about um, Drake's mom, and he had posted a picture of a Drake lookalike with semen on his face, and he wanted DJ Academics to post it on on his own site, and he said, "I'm not going to do that." And in that conversation, DJ Academics says that you better be careful because even though, like, and I'm paraphrasing again, even though he's not a gangster, you may be pushing him. As a reaction to that conversation, X goes and says that he takes it out, out off the, the post off off the off of uh, his website or off of IG and he he says that his Instagram was hacked 
I laid that out in my motion to perpetuate the t uh, testimony, which a, a motion to per perpetuate testimony is when you have a witness that is, that is relevant to your defense and that lives beyond the, the, the jurisdictional limits of the court and that you feel that you're not going to be able to bring them into court. So I'm basically asking the court to allow me to go to California or wherever I have to go, depose this individual. And now with his deposition, if he doesn't show up, I could use it in my defense or in my case in chief. Right. So I did that argued it to the court and the court in a reaction basically said, I'm not going to grant your motion to perpetuate testimony. Just take his devil. The judge was who told the defense, just bring in Drake for a deposition. And then we can figure out if testimonies, if different things can be admitted. So the defense said, okay, cool, let's do it. But once they began a process to bring Drake in for a deposition, Drake hired Bradford Cohen, who's a very powerful attorney who has ties to Broward, right? So when they brought him in, all of a sudden the judge changed his entire tone. The judge was no longer okay with Drake coming in for a deposition. The judge was overruling his own ruling. <laughs> like, you know, it's insane. She knew about the violence between Migos and, and her son where there was a violent episode. Um, she knew about 600 Breezy, which is a, a, a known admitted gang member from Chicago going to South Florida and posting uh, uh, on, on, on social media saying that he's blicked up, which means that I have a gun. And she was concerned about it. She testified in, in the depot that she discussed it with her son. Uh, she testified that the reason that she wanted additional security with him the day he died was because of this beef with Migos and and the and everything that, that, that we're discussing. So it, it was relevant. And for for many months during the trial, you know, January, February, even February 7th uh, of 2023, the judge is agreeing with me. OK, now there comes a moment and a hearing. Um, he he goes ahead and hires Drake hires after the judge enters a uh, um, a rule to show cause basically saying a purge date. You have to appear for depo on this day or I'm going to do a writ of bodily attachment. He then goes and hires Brad Cohen, a friend of the show, friend of mine as well, an excellent attorney. And Brad files several motions, motion to quash the subpoena. Um, and he, he files a motion for protective order. The judge granted both requests from Bradford Cohen, the protective order and the quash, right? Say, hey, bro, yo, you can't go to Drake home to serve him no more, bro. Like, it's over with. Like, bro, leave him alone. Stop harassing him. This man got nothing to do with this. The defense was like, bro, you switched up on us this quickly? Because of Bradford, bro, you asked us to do the deposition. So then the defense was then asked, okay, bro, yo, one last chance. Yo, prove to me why this Drake angle is relevant again. Why is Drake having to come to court? So then the defense says, okay, we got you. We have a gang expert that has been used in your in in, in your court. This is your gang expert. He's been used in this court over 120 times. We want to call that gang expert to the stands, and he will testify that Drake has been throwing up similar signs, right? Drake has been throwing up the same gang signs that one of the defendants has been throwing up, right? Which is a blood set, but bro, yo, Drake ain't no blood, bro. Yo, yo, <laughs> Drake's just imitating whatever he see Young Thug do, right? So they want to bring in a gang expert to testify that Drake and the defendant was throwing up the same gang signs, right? And also to testify towards the other people surrounding Drake and their gang affiliations and how they're dangerous. But the judge said, no, we're not allowing him to testify. Not happening. And the defense, my understanding, wanted to call uh, Jesse De La Cruz, who they had claimed, you had claimed, discovered visual evidence that Drake could have had ties to the same organization as a co-defendant in this case, Robert Allen. And I believe the brief states, Dr. Cruz's research revealed photos of Mr. Graham throwing the same gang signs as Allen. And Allen is that accomplice who I mentioned before who testified against his uh, co-defendants. But Cruz also revealed that people who knew Drake were allegedly seen in XXX Tentacion's neighborhood threatening him before he died. The brief reads, social media posts showed these same known Graham associates were seen in Onfroy's neighborhood threatening him just prior to the murder. And then they say even more revealing is this connection that Cruz made to Drake's song lyrics because shortly after XXX was killed, 
They, uh, the brief writes, Mr. Graham released a song entitled Triple X with suspicious lyrics. SMS, Triple X, that's the only time I shot below the neck. And Dr. Cruz found another connection between the murder and Drake's lyrics in the song I'm Upset. The song I'm Upset contains lyrics regarding Louis bags for body bags. The implication there being that Drake was referencing murder. Uh, but ultimately, Cruz was completely excluded from the trial and the jury did not hear any of his findings. Mauricio, I have that right. And, and can you walk, be a, can you emphasize that a little bit more? Can you explain that a little bit more? Yes. Okay. So um, Dr. De La Cruz did proffer to the court everything that you've stated regarding the song lyrics, um, the fact that that uh, Drake was throwing gang signs that were the same gang signs that Allen was throwing up and in, in, in different social media posts. Um, the the court strikes Dr. De La Cruz, which is a known gang expert and well known in his field, has testified over 150 times in trials. They allowed the state to put their own gang expert, Detective Polo, uh, which which really bolstered a lot of what Dr. De La Cruz said. The defense at this point is baffled. It is pretty clear the judge has some type of bias going on because why is he allowing for their gang expert to come on? And this gang expert don't have, I guess, the reputation or the credibility that their gang expert had in this very same court system. This gang expert has been used multiple times. So the judge told the defense that they can't use their gang expert but the prosecutors and the DA, they can use their gang expert to come to court and testify. So it was just, it was just odd. The rulings were odd. And regardless of what we feel like, who is guilty or who isn't guilty, because let's be clear, bro, I don't feel like Drake is guilty. I feel like Drake has nothing to do with this, right? Drake is just a rapper, was taking advantage of it. So I do think the people who was found guilty, that they were the ones who did it. But still, when you're in the court system, it has to be fair. Like, everybody has to be granted a fair trial, right? And the trial has to be 100% fair because if it's 99% fair and that's allowed, then what else is allowed, right? If 99% fair is allowed, then is 50% fair allowed, right? So if things wasn't all the way on the straight and narrow, bro, then this is going to be overturned. And the one thing we know, bro, is, yo, we know countless of cases that has been overturned based on a technicality. A murder trial is the easiest case to beat, bro. All right, why? Because because the smallest of technicalities, bro, can get it overturned because a court system ain't gonna feel comfortable sentencing you to like sending you to jail for the rest of your life, and they can't say without a doubt that everything was done correctly. Now, what's even more odd too is that the prosecutors admit that when XSX died, that Drake was a potential suspect. But they ruled out Drake when they said they looked on his social media and confirmed that he wasn't in Florida. <laughs> Drake was a suspect, but they ruled him out because they looked on his social media and confirmed he wasn't in Florida. On direct of the lead of Detective Kershaw, which was the, the lead detective in the case, she asked, do you have any information that Drake was involved in this? And that was before the court struck him. So whatever the reasons may have existed, the moment that state attorney opens up their mouth and, and says that, now, now he's really at issue because now- the, You're opening the, the, the door. Jury... You're opening the door to that coming yes. in. Yes, yes. And um, not only was it an issue of, of her, her mentioning it with Detective Curcio, but she asked him, you, you actually were able to verify whether or not Drake was in South Florida at the time. So in cross-examination, I asked, what, why would you have to verify if he, was, if he was in South Florida? Why? Because he's a person of interest. And then I had to further ask, well, what did you do to, and I'm paraphrasing, what did you do to, to you know, figure out whether he was in South Florida? He says, oh, my partner checked social media. So then I said, okay, so in a homicide case, the best that Broward Sheriff's Office has for a jury is to peep his Instagram. You know, so it was basically breaking down the poor job that, that BSO did in their investigation and the tunnel vision that they had. And the fact that none of this was in their report. So you felt it important enough to check and verify whether or not he was in South Florida, but you never memorialized it in your report. And I'm not allowed to ask about it. 
Well, did, did he, he also testify, uh, Detective Curcio, that he learned that. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Like, you don't rule him out by talking to him, getting an alibi, <laughs> getting an actual concrete proof and evidence that he was here instead of there. You rule him out because you looked at his Instagram. Listen, I'm not saying Drake is involved. I'm just saying this is kind of crazy. And Drake ain't doing himself no favors by essentially going down the path that he went at where he did everything possible to allude to being involved in this. So who knows, bro? Y'all let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think about this, bro? All right, do you guys feel like Drake is involved or was Drake just cloud chasing? All right, let me know. And if you're still watching, man, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out how hip-hop's biggest scallywag almost got whooped on Fresh and Fit last night. Click on this video here to find out why she almost got whooped. I'm going to see you guys in this video. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.